Hey guys, Xiaomi. Today, we finally can take a look at all the skill of all the new Assassin's Creed unit. So let's dive right in and we can talk about the events and all the other new stuff. But the main thing will be about the new unit skill. So we saw the light one already. The light one is pretty much a single target damage dealer that can kind of put the threat from the enemy to somebody else so that he can survive and do big damage with the skill 3. Not too excited for that. I'm not sure if the unit is even good for like R5 or PvE in general because you need to not get attacked by the enemy and usually bosses can do AoE damage. So I'm not too sure about the line one, but let's take a look at the order new unit. So first we have the Fire Ezio. We have the skill of this one shown in the previous video already as well. So another sort of single target damage dealer Moving on to the water one. Now, the water one is pretty good because it seems like it's going to be a very good PvP unit. So we have the skill one that's the same. Skill two is the threat take. Skill two is going to be the threat state skill, which is like, it's okay. It's not that super amazing because everyone can strip nowadays and AoE damage kind of nullify the effect of the skill. We have tactical bomb. So attack all enemies to remove all beneficial effect. That is really good. Not a one buff strip, but an all buff strip. And then we have increased the attack bar of the ally with the highest attack bar by 25%. So only a single unit attack bar boost. But if you speed tune your team correctly, you get the exact unit to move the way you want, which is really good. And then we have an attack power boost. No attack bar boost, but attack power boost. So you can have a unit that can push back the enemy attack but after the strip and then the unit with attack power boost like illusion can cleave the entire enemy team so this is a very good unit i like support unit that can set up for others because your there's there's no limit to your imagination you know what i'm talking about like the fire guy the light guy up here they're single target damage dealer they do damage that's pretty much it but this guy you can pair him with so many different things. And that is the one that I want. Very good unit, okay? I'm not sure how realistic, how practical it is, but that skill is pretty good. Now, the win one is a four-star unit, so you gotta lower your expectation a little bit. Skill two will decrease defense and attack bar. Pretty good skill. Skill three, attack all enemies and decrease their attack bar by 25%. De decrease the skill cooldown of all allies by one turn each if an enemy dies. So attack all enemies to only decrease their attack bar by 25%. It's not a whole lot. It can disturb the enemy turn for sure. Allow your team to gain the turn. And it has to kill to get that cooldown thing activated. So I think he, if you put him into like a control team or like a cleave team, he should be the last to move so that the setup is there and the damage is done. He's going to finish up the, in, the entire enemy team or at least kill somebody. And potentially, if you kill two enemy target, you get two turn cooldown decrease on the other unit. That can be very, very helpful. So if you prepare to use him in a cleave because he's an AoE damage dealer, he should be the last one to move. And he should do a lot of damage because... You, call, you can only get the effect if the enemy actually die with this skill, okay? So, seems like a good unit. A four-star AoE damage dealer. Probably gonna get overshadowed by Lucian at some point. But it's a four-star. So, most of you guys will probably get this guy. And he might be interesting as a damage dealer for a four-star siege as well. Because Karkarno is kind of out of the way for the most part. So, we have a lot of wind water. And this might be interesting. Next one, we have LD Nat 5. Oh, we have a four star here. You probably never see him, but let's take a look at the skill. We have the threat state skill 2. We have skill 3, air assassination. Attack the enemy and fill up your attack bar if the enemy dies. If the enemy dies, okay? Additionally, passive skill of all enemies excluding the boss are not activated. Oh, it's like a single target hand wu, right? So no passive skill at all. And if you kill the target, you get full attack bar. Not instant turn, full attack bar. There are many things that can cut in between full attack bar boosts like this. But it's pretty good. You can one-shot a lot of unit with passive that revive or Theomars or even 
a crow, I mean, you, it doesn't really do anything against... Oh, if you hit a chroma, you don't have to deal with the anti-crit passive. And that is pretty, pretty good. But I'm not sure if it's going to protect, uh, get protected by Triana. And enemy can definitely revive or put sort of soap protection on the target because assassination doesn't ignore those things. So it's a good skill. And then he will get another turn, potentially. And he can either do a skill one or put a threat state on somebody else. I'm not sure how really good this guy is. <laughs> how come this guy and then the free one? Not like super amazing. I don't know why. The dark one. So it's a four star unit. But then it's a very cool passive. A passive to actually show the, the unit uniqueness in from Assassin's Creed with the thing. Wait, wait, it's not, it's not this guy. I think it's a different guy. I think it's the one below here. So this one is also pretty interesting. So we have a decreased defense and attack bar thingy, same as the other unit. And then we have attack additionally with an attack that cannot be counter-attacked. But then they would just counter-attack the previous attacks. I'm not, I'm not sure if it, <laughs> if it means anything. So if you attack, and then you attack additionally with an attack that cannot be counter-attacked, but they already counter attack your first attack. So does that mean something? Like, does it mean that your entire attack is not going to get countered? Like, what's going on over here? So that's pretty much it. Attack additionally with an attack that cannot be counter-attacked. So it's like an anti-counter-attack kind of deal. You have decreased defense, decreased attack bar, and nothing too crazy about this guy, but probably can be useful against counter-attack thing. He has no stun, so we can't really stun the vert. That'd be pretty cool. But... For the most part, we'll not see these guys very early on. We're going to see the wind guy probably very, very soon. So overall, the water one, a huge winner for sure. Very sick skill three. Moving on to Bayek. We have the fire Bayek. Skill one of all the family will be heal block, anti-heal. And it's good. It's okay. It's not the best thing ever, but it's not bad. In the meta where healing is definitely a thing. Consecutive slash, we have attack our enemies two times to strip one buff and silence. Damage increased to max HP. So it's all right. Damage probably going to be minimal because it is a max HP scaling thing. So like carnal, you know, so with additional damage uh, artifact, you're going to do okay damage, but not too crazy damage here. Rampage or Rage, remove all handful effect granted on yourself. Recover your HP by 40%. Not full. Full would be pretty cool. Afterwards, attack enemy five times. Additional damage artifact. Dealing damage portion to your max HP. So self-heal, self-cleanse, but not a full heal. And no buff. And just some damage after that. I'm not sure how practical this is because if you are stunned, then you pretty much cannot use this skill. And if you're not stunned, I think you can cleanse like heal block, defense break, that kind of thing. So it she can tank, or he, oh, he is a he. He can tank and self-heal and do max HP. He's like a fire tank, pretty much. But no AoE, mostly single target. Only one skill can strip. Hmm. I'm sure how good it's going to be compared to all the fire unit in the meta. In RTA, I'm pretty sure this is very hard to compare to using a Masha or a Karno or... There are not very many, many good fire thing out there. And then there's that stupid water holy berry that just rampage, abrage the entire RTA, making many fire units sad. So I'm not sure about the fire bayak. Let's take a look at the water bayak. We have skill two, elite ambusher. Shoot four arrows to attack the enemies. Each arrow decreasing the enemy attack by 20% with an 80% chance. Probably going to go up to 100% chance to decrease enemy attack bar and max HP scaling. So single target attack bar decrease. Not even a full attack bar decrease. It's okay, I guess. Master Warrior. Attack the enemy to reset the attack bar. Attack two more times to inflict damage to the enemy max HP. Ooh, that sounds like a good Dragon's B12 skill that you probably don't need because everyone can build a Trikaru team. So it's a four-star unit. It has two skill that single target decrease attack bar. It's an enemy max HP skill. Hopefully it can be used in a boss situation. But then 
PVE is just dominated by free-to-play units, so I don't think this guy is going to get a chance in any PVE content. So that skill 3 is going to be absolutely garbage in PvP already. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to make any meaningful change in Siege meta for the 4-star tower. Don't think that's going to be the case here because I think using a Vigor as a water tank and damage and healer is just way too good to be true. I mean, two-way unit just spoil the fun for, for many, many things, yeah? Not sure if this guy's gonna be good. Seems like, guys, half or more than half of these units will be absolutely garbage. Let's be real here, right? So, I guess he's gonna be one of those. The win one. Okay, so we have the strip into the silence. Decent skill. Skill 3, inflict continuous damage on enemy for two turns when attacking. Ooh, like a Melia kind of situation. Every turn you can put dots on the enemy. That's not bad. Increase damage bell by 20%. Oh, and recover your HP by 3% per handful effect granted on the enemy. So every turn you can put dots, do more damage according to debuff and heal. Oh, is that a GB12 kind of thing? Definitely not good for all the bosses that you can't put continuous damage on, but... For GB12, you get this. Is it better than Malaya? But then the strip and silence is kind of meaningless. In PvE, sort of. You can, you can silence TOA bosses. Um, I'm not sure. I can't really think of anything that you can use in PvE for this guy immediately that Malaya is not superior in because Malaya can have AoE slow attack by reduction. So that's very good PvE usage. This skill kit doesn't scream PvE. And then is it very good for PvP? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. But maybe it's going to be a dot continuous damage kind of guy. But then no big control, no big damage. Very hard to imagine how I would use this guy, but I, I, I guess it's fine. Not, not highly rated by me. The light one is a four-star unit. We have the single target... Attack bar decrease thing. Not absorption, decrease, okay? I wish it was a attack bar absorption skill. Violent Rampage. Attack the enemy to deal damage that increase according to your max HP and destroy. Oh my god, another light destroy situation. Destroy the enemy HP by the inflicted damage. Better do a lot of damage. Additionally, the damage increases up to 100% in proportion to enemy destroy HP. Why do we have another light LD unit that deal, that destroy and deal damage according to the amount destroy thingy. Like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be bad, right? <laughs> but it's a four star unit, better than a five star. So you can use it in a siege, in a long term siege situation. Wait, but, oh, so it's a gonna be, it's gonna be a tanky, light, four star, destroy runes kind of deal. Additional damage kind of deal. And I think that's pretty much it. Not a fan. Not a fan of this kid at all. The five star dark support. Support. I like that. So we have the strip into silence. And then we have the ego that's stun. I like this, guys. Sounds pretty funny on paper. So it's another unit, another dark unit that can kind of put out a lot of debuff on its own every single turn. Like Kiki, but like not as good. So every turn he can stun something. He can heal block, and he can potentially strip into a silence. He's a decent 5-star debuff thingy that I think is going to have a potential somewhere, but still not the most amazing. So in this family, the dark one is pretty good, and I don't like any of the other one. <laughs> oh my god, I don't like any one of them. Huh. Weird. Moving on to Cassandra. Fire Cassandra, Bull Rush, okay? It's gonna be decrease attack bar, I like that. Ignore defense, decrease the skill cooldown of that skill by one turn if enemy die to this. Very, very good. A skill that makes sense. So Kali, but cooler. Skill three, grind invincible for one turn and life drain for two turn on yourself when you're inflicted with fatal damage. Wait, does she survive the fatal damage? I, I hope. So when they attack you with a damage that would kill you, you would not die and you would get invincible, invincibility and heal life drain. So you heal back some HP when you do damage. Seems 
pretty good. No, I'm not, not going to lie. That sounds like a pretty good solid single target damage deal. That is interesting. <laughs> not like these guys, okay? I like this, this one already. Water, support unit. AoE defense break and then hit critical hit 100% against the wind element. Kind of cool. Seems like an interesting unit for Siege 4 star for sure. Going to one shot at Triana somehow. Sounds like a cool thing. Win one. Oh my god, that skill 2 again with the ignore defense and cooldown reduction of the same skill. Attack enemies to reset their attack bar and glancing it for 2 turn. Ooh. Wow. That's like a pretty good unit. It has good damage and control skill. Huh, that's like a counter to Manon right here. Because you can one-shot Manon with skill 2. You can glancing the rest of them or something like that. That sounds like a Pretty good unit. I like this girl. The win one right here. I want that one. Okay, so far I want this. And I want the the blue the blue Ezio. I like that. Light Cassandra. So we have attack all enemies to stun for two turns with a, what is this lame skill? What is 30% chance? What the the light cannon girl has higher chance to stun than this, right? And it's still garbage. It's like very much like the light cannon girl. A skill tool that decreases defense, AoE, a skill to that stun AoE with a very shitty chance, and a skill one that decreases enemy attack. But this is literally the light cannon girl reskin. Except for the better skill too, because it doesn't attack the enemy. I think that's better. The Dark Cassandra. We have ignore defense and attack and endure buff. Not so she is like Kali, right? Kali ignore defense and buff attack power on herself. But then Kali also buff speed and immunity and invincibility. I think this is like a two-way Kali, but like dark element. <laughs> but like a little bit better with the skill too, I think. Some might say Kali buff is like way better than this buff thingy. But it serves single target, I mean raw damage dealer that can die easily, so endure is going to be great. But sounds like a Kali right here. And then we have Evor, okay? I, I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Evor. We have four-star fire unit. So we have the stun and decrease attack bar and do more damage if enemy is under stun. That's not too bad. And recover the HP by 30% of lost HP if you don't get attacked during the enemy's turn. Oh, self-healing if you don't get attacked. The damage inflicted to the enemy increased by 50% if you have half or more HP remaining. Oh, if she survived, and if you use her in a guild PvE situation where she doesn't get attacked, you can do more damage, you can self-heal, and you have defense break. Very good unit. I like this. I like this kit. Water support unit. Huh. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. We have defense break. We have continuous damage for two turns. Attack enemy three times. Huh. With only 50% chance. Huh? It's a five star unit. Why can't you have just good continuous damage skill? What is this 50% chance bullcrap? Might of the clan. I'm sorry, I need some water. I'm trying to cry right here. But we have grant up to three fact of might of the clan according to your stat when the battle begins. Ooh, attack powers. Increase the damage down to enemy by 100%. Defense. Oh, it's a different thing, right? Decrease the damage received from enemies by 30%. Attack speed. Remove one beneficial effect granted to enemy if you attack on your turn. Wait. These, these are not the usual attack power, defense. These are different things. Okay, this girl is very unique. Oh. Huh. So, she's like a debuff monster, right? She can dodge and defense break with very shitty chance. But then the buff thingy, very interesting. I want to see what happens when we use that. Because it's different from the usual buff that you see, right? Oh, very cool. We have the wind support unit, defense break, continuous damage, and then more continuous damage and exploding the continuous damage. Will she make it into the new GB12 meta? We shall find out. The light one, 5 star by the way. 
we have the stunning attack by decreasing skill. And she's immune to inability effects. Sounds like a Jagger, Fire Monkey King kind of thing. Increase your attack bar by 10% whenever an enemy or an ally gains a turn. Ooh, that's like, um, that's like, uh, it feels like Amduat kind of deal, right? You gain attack bar constantly when something on the field take a turn. And you can decrease defense and you can stun. Oh, very good unit. Very, very good unit. A new answer to the control meta. LD5, of course. <laughs> Unbelievable. Ah, the dark LD5. The, the dark uh, Evor. We have the continuous damage. We have the dot. Increase all allies attack power for three turns and attack power by 30%. Afterward, all allies except yourself attack random enemies. Uh, huh? A so you don't know who you attack? <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is, but that sounds like a fun time, okay? Good, good stuff. So this family is great. Cassandra is great. Bayek, sad, very, very sad. This is like, there's only one guy that I want. And the free LD5. What do you guys think about these skills? Let me know in the comment section down below. We have the new mission thingy, like every sort of fantasy RPG. We have a mission board for, instead of doing the event notice, we have it in here, in the game. So we will collect these codex, codices, and some other random stuff, and you will exchange these event currency for other stuff later, like the free collapse scroll and all that good stuff. We have the event dungeon appearing. All the stuff that you have seen before from the previous notice about the collaboration, Nothing new and exciting over here. So, raid up banner, like, does it really work? Who knows? We have new Ezio emojis. That looks pretty cute. I like that. More way to tilt your enemy in RTA if you turn on emojis in the first. Why do you turn on emojis? Why? What's wrong with you? Okay? What's wrong with you? And some of the information stuff, they changed the name of the fire. Magical Archer to Amanda because she used to be Cassandra. And now she's like, shit. So nobody care about her. So her name got changed. Feels bad for her. And that is the update notice. The update will happen very, very soon here. And we have all the new event as well. One thing I want to talk about is that the new special is different. I'm not sure who watched until this point, but the new special is different. Okay, they're taking away the LD element and they're putting in Water, Fire, Wind Monster, which is very, very cool. Finally, they're doing something with Special League. They finally hire an extra intern for that content and not just one person pushing the on and off button for that content, which is very, very cool. And the other collab event that will give you a free Assassin's Creed scroll, give you the free LD5 Altair, and give you extra stuff when you grow your Altair up and use it. And then you can collect all the reward stuff here. And new alias skin to match the new collaboration. Okay, okay, mommy. <laughs> Bruh. And new skill up event as well for you to skill up your new four or five star monster. Only collab monster and not the all the usual monster, unfortunately. And also mystical event as usual. And that is pretty much it with the new update. Hope you guys will enjoy the collaboration. I will try my best to get a new content out as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.